I started TAC in the 90s because I had published a book called Out of the Shadows. And Mr. and Mrs. Stanley read it. And they said, you know, this is really a disastrous situation. It focused a lot on the mentally ill homeless and the mentally ill in jails. And Mrs. Stanley said, is there anything we can do? And we thought about it. And there's lots of things that needed to be done. The one thing that nobody had tried to affect was the laws. The, the Civil Liberties Group had changed the laws in virtually every state to make it almost impossible to treat patients. And it was clear as long as the laws were written and used as they were that trying to get treatment as families were learning for their mentally ill family member was exceedingly difficult if the person did not accept voluntary treatment. So that's where the idea came from is, okay, let's see if we can change the laws and push back a little bit. And that was the origin of the Treatment Advocacy Center. For the length of time that the Treatment Advocacy Center has existed, we've accomplished much more than I would have thought we could. I was told when I started uh, that it was a hopeless cause to begin with, uh, which made me even more interested in it. Uh, and that it would take at least five years to be able to change any law because there was so much resistance against this and we had so much opposition among the civil libertarians and the ACLU and Baslon Center and groups like that. In fact, we changed several laws, not only New York State, but several laws in the first five years. Uh, we have affected the laws, I think, in almost half the states now. Uh, we haven't accomplished nearly as much as I would have hoped we would. Uh, but we've accomplished much more than I had dreamed that we could.